Hello and welcome to this video of TensorFlow 2.0 and introduction. In this video, we're going to talk about TensorFlow 1.x and then compare it with TensorFlow 2.0. TensorFlow 2.0 was released in October 2019 and uh, it has come up with a lot of changes which we are going to discuss in a few minutes. Now, TensorFlow is arguably the most popular framework for AI and machine learning which is an open source library. It uses data flow graphs, also known as directed graphs for processing. We are gonna talk about directed graphs as well, as well in a few minutes. Now before that, um, let's look at the architecture of TensorFlow. TensorFlow to its core is written in C++. TensorFlow supports GPUs, DPUs, CPUs processing which is distributed processing in order to train and run deep neural networks. We're gonna talk about deep neural networks in a few minutes as well. So the core engine, it's written in C++ language, and then it has a Python as a wrapper, which helps to write Python code on top of this core deep TensorFlow C++. Again, other languages which are also supported are Java, C, Go language. But for this introduction video, we're gonna focus on Python. Next layer is an abstraction layer, which consists of losses, metrics, and other important functions, which are used for model evaluation and neural networks building. And then TF estimator, and Keras are the high level APIs which are which can help create neural networks and models, trainings, and evaluation super fast. So this is a very high level architecture of how the TensorFlow itself is designed. Now remember I mentioned about directed graphs, so let's talk about that as well. The name TensorFlow is de derived from two words. Tensor and flow. Tensor meaning data structures and flow meaning the operations and the transformations which happen on top of this data set. In effect, a tensor can be any array of data. It can be zero, one, or multi dimensional. Zero dimensional arrays like scalars, zero dimensions like scalars one dimensional such as line or vectors or two dimensional matrix. The TensorFlow helps shape the data set in any way you or your data set demand. Especially, especially while dealing with images, videos, text, and even structured data set, TensorFlow is extremely useful as it can represent any data in any form, in any types of arrays, any dimensional array. So tensor is data, node and operation, and the flow is the flow itself. Now, let's talk about what makes tensor flow very effective. Now think of an image, right? Now there are two inputs over here, x1 and x2, and then you have nodes, operation nodes. And if you see here, it's a typical representation of a deep neural network. Tensor, TensorFlow is graphical based mathematical operation representation between multidimensional arrays to a single scalar array. And all of this can be performed using Python or any other software language. But Python is the most important or most widely accepted language. Now, as we talked about neurons, neurons, and networks, let's look at definition of a deep learning, which is neural nets. Deep learning are those mathematical algorithms which try to mimic the neurons of a brain, a human brain, or any living being's brain. ANN, which is artificial neural networks, are answers to make computers more like humans using artificial neurons and layering as you see over here 
x1 and x2 are input data set and these are the edges the weights these are operations mathematical neurons nodes operation and finally it gives you an output so ANNs use different layers for mathematical processing to make sense of input information now let's take a look at a very small basic neural network without layers just input edges mathematical computations and output if you look at it the lines are the weights and these are inputs again you can have series and layers but right now we don't have any layer and this is the equation of a network so this is x0 multiplied by w0 plus w1 multiplied by x1 plus w2 multiplied by x2 that is an equation for this particular graph see graph right so tensorflow all it does is creates a graph and then executes the graph so this this is an equation which is mathematical in nature now let's look at tensorflow 1.x tensor data flow computations operations node and how the graph is arranged in layers those are the basics now let's look at numpy uh, i'm assuming that you already have an understanding of python basics of python if not i'll put a link down in the description section of this video to talk about a little bit of basic python if you want to now numpy you see over here that we have written a code import numpy as np and then x is a single dimensional array and y is also a single dimensional array all i want to do is add x plus y and if this is an output look at this this is an array of three four five six and seven so if you look at it whatever the data you give automatically this is printed similarly if you want to do addition or multiplication here it's printed used print a and m so numpy is a direct execution but tensorflow 1.x was to first build the graph and then execute it i'm going to talk about it now so in tensorflow 1.1 this is not valid for tensorflow 2.0 which is coming but i understand that in order to understand tensorflow 2.0 i 1.0 understanding or 1.x understanding is beneficial so this is tensorflow 1.0 i use tens import tensorflow as tf and then instead of arrays i call it as constants again it's a array now you see here i use the tensorflow function here I used the, the np function, which is numpy function. I'm using tensorflow function to add x and y. In when I print a, that means the addition, you see that it gives a name. It defines the shape, that means 5, 0. And then data type is in 32. But you do not see a result please look at this is not tensorflow 2.0 this is tensorflow 1.0 and you are not able to see the result directly so what you need to do you will have to run a session so build a graph this is a small graph and this is the tensor how it's going to be what tensor will be run will be this so you say tf dot session dot run a and then only you will get this output. Please note that the arrays are different. You can still have the same arrays or, or scalar. Now, let's talk about the difference between TensorFlow 1.x, which is on the left-hand side, this one, which you already seen. This is TensorFlow 2. First of all, to install TensorFlow 2 in Google Colab, which we are going to be using by default, so Google Colab, in order to get started with that, there is a link in the description section of the video below to get started with Google Colab. In Google Colab, by default, the version is 
when we record this video. Here, in order to do TensorFlow 2.0, remove this hash sign, the comment, and then pip install TensorFlow 2.0. This will enable TensorFlow version 2.0. The same code, tf.constant, tf.constant, and then the same code as we wrote earlier, instead of giving a name of the tensor, in TensorFlow 2, you will directly see the data set. You do not need a session. Please note that this is a comparison of left and right. On the left hand side, you have 1.0. On the right hand side, you have 1.15. On the right hand side, you have TensorFlow 2.0. You note that on the left hand side, you have a lazy execution. That means first you make a graph, so this particular tensor, and then execute in the session. In TensorFlow 2.0, there is no session. As soon as you say add and print, you would have this printed and then shape 5 and data type print 1, the int 32. You will directly get the output. So I guess you got a little bit of primer on TensorFlow 2.0. Now let me talk about TensorFlow 2.0 architecture. TensorFlow 2.0 makes development of ML applications much easier. It has tight integrations to Keras. What you see on the right hand side can be also done in 1.15 which is the previous version of Tensor which is TensorFlow 1.x but that was known as eager execution you could have enabled eager execution but that was not by default in tensorflow 2.0 eager evaluation or eager execution is set to default tensorflow 2.0 makes the experience of developing applications as familiar as possible for python developers again python is the main language which we are looking at all right, so let's look at the TensorFlow 2.0 architecture training. So in the TensorFlow 2.0, there are three different sets, training, model versioning and repo, and distribution and deployment. In this, the core TensorFlow remains the same, which can execute on CPU, TPUs, or GPUs. Now, for training, you have tf.data, which is data sets, and keras and estimators, which you are pretty much aware if you already know TensorFlow 1.0. If not, follow these series of videos, and we will talk about keras and estimators as we go down. And then you have TensorBoard, which is already available earlier as well, but TensorBoard can be used to see while training the losses and metrics real time. We'll talk about TensorBoard as well. In the model versioning and repo section, we have saved models, which is now a standardized saved model format to be able to run models on variety of runtimes. We'll talk about those runtimes in a little bit. While traditional session-based programming model is still maintained, it's recommended for Python development with eager execution and this execution is the saved model can be put on hub as repositories. So we have TF hub for models developed. Please note that the distributed training itself supports Keras model.fit and also support custom training rooms. But these models are saved and can be used from the TF Hub repositories. So eager execution is the key for this TensorFlow 2.0. Now, standardized save models, file format, are able to run on a variety of runtimes, which includes, but not limited to, cloud, web, browser, mobile devices, which is using TF Lite as well as the Node.js which has 
tensorflow.js so this is a very high level architecture of tensorflow 2.0 and this has made a difference on how tensorflow can be used so let's get started let's run our first tensorflow code but that we will do it in our next video thank you for watching